Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for coming back and joining us at Blonde Ambitions Podcast. Today, I have such an awesome guest. I'm really excited for this. Um, she is an amazing beauty and wellness advocate on social media. You help others prioritize self-care for themselves. Um, she also has a great eye for fashion, an awesome Amazon store. Um, plus, she's a celebrity groomer, and she works with some pretty cool people. Plus, I've known her for ever. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to say how long we've known each other. But she is Marissa Machado, and I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I have to say, it's that was the first time somebody's introduced me that I haven't before told them exactly how to pronounce my name. And you're the only one that knows exactly how to pronounce my name. Machado? Yes. Everybody says, read it Machado or Machado. Oh. So, even like people that have known me for so long, I will still cry. But like people that know me in LA, but people that, you know, know me from back home, like yeah. pronounce my name. So that was really refreshing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, yeah, I guess because I just have known you forever. And then my other friend, Megan, is also now a Machado. And so, yeah, so, yeah, so um, I'm really excited that you're here. And so we reconnected back on Instagram and I came across like all your stuff and I'm like, oh my God, Marissa, I knew that you were doing the grooming and stuff, but I didn't realize how into fashion and health and wellness that you were in. And so I really was interested in that. And so I was like, I'm going to shoot her a DM and see if she wants to come on here and talk. Cause first off, I want to like catch up and see what you've been up to for the last 20 years. <laughs> I mean, I I think more, but yes. Yeah. yeah. And then I want to, I want you to share like all your knowledge on here because I want people to benefit from your knowledge and um, the things that you are good at. And that that's, yeah. So if you want, I mean, do you want to talk about like back home and how we know each other or, yeah, I mean, I going to say to to what you just said as far as us reconnecting on Instagram I um it's interesting how you explain that because for me I yes I've been doing men's grooming for the last like 16 years in Los Angeles I've been in Los Angeles for 20 but specifically men's grooming for 16 so on social media, I always just presented myself as, you know, Marissa Machado men's groomer. And I didn't really show a lot of my, myself or my personality. And I remember when Instagram stories started, like I always would take photos of my outfits and send them to my mom and say like, oh, look what I'm wearing today or whatever. And then I remember when stories started, I was like, I, I called my mom. I said, do you think it would be really vain if I posted my outfits in my stories, she was like, no, you know, I think you could do that. You know, I said, I think I'm going to call it Eminem looks, you know, yeah. was like, I don't know, 2016 or something, you know, and I, at the time I thought it was so vain to share anything about myself. So over time I've slowly sort of unraveled a bit more about myself. And in this last year, um, t honestly turning 40, I just kind of thought, you know what? This is who I am. Like I'm more than a men's groomer. And let me just, yeah. maybe somebody else is interested in what else I do other than working with these guys or, or whatever. So I just, I started sharing more. And obviously that's how you and I were then connected because we share interests in that way. So yeah. um, I guess that's how social media truly works. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and now that's the thing now is everything is my outfit today, the outfit of the day and you're perfect for it. I mean, I bought this little Amazon shirt, you know, from your Amazon store. I mean, it's so cute. And I've, I wore it one other time to a party that I went to a couple of weeks ago and everybody was like, Oh my God, I love your shirt. And I'm like, my friend Melissa, she's the best. Like you have to go to her Amazon store. It's so good, and I love yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And you give such re like really good tips on 
not only fashion, but you share what you do every morning. I love that, how you take the time for yourself and you go do your workouts, you do the kickboxing thing. I mean, I love it all. It's so great. I just wanted to share with everybody um, all of your stuff. So let's go back. And how did you go from being like Marissa Machado? Like you were the it girl, I feel like, you know, I don't know. Here in town, in Bakersfield, you know, or back in the day, like you were, you know, I'm like, oh, that's not cool. Um, how did you go from being just a little small town girl like we are, you know, small town girls to being a, a celebrity groomer and this amazing, um, just all the things that you do? How did you go from that point to this point where you're at now? That's Within so in a nutshell. Of course, it's. So it's just, it's always so interesting to, to hear, um, somebody else describe you. you, uh, you. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't need to make it awkward. No, not at all. I just, you know, I never, I never really, um, consider myself the it girl, to be honest with you. Thank you for saying that. Um, I always had, you know, uh, so basically growing up in Bakersfield, you know, um, my family's in agriculture and, I. I was in all of that. I showed pigs. I showed steers. Four H, right? Four H, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I love all of that. But my mother was really, really fashionable, and still is. And she made her her all her clothes. And she watched Entertainment Tonight every night. <laughs> I would just sit with her while she cooked dinner and do my homework and watch Entertainment Tonight. And I, I just one day it just hit me. I just said, you know what, mom, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to go to Hollywood and I'm going to be the reason that they look so good. Now, my dream was, you know, to work with women because obviously I didn't, I didn't know that there was even a men's grooming world, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Still, still don't even know what that entails. So, um, I just, uh, that, I think I was around 13 when I, when I told my mom that, and from there, I just really started leaning into it and researching what I, the steps I would need to take to get to Hollywood. And now we're talking year 19, you know, 90s, (laughs) when I'm looking into this. So yeah, like getting to the Mac counter in LA was like huge, you know, and back then It really, it really was, you know, they were really respected artists. And so my mom would bring me to LA and um, I, for all before the dances and I would do a trial run with my makeup and then my mom would buy me, you know, all the makeup that they used on me. I'd bring it back to Bakersfield and then replicate the look they did on me. But while I was there with the artists, I'd say, how did you get this job? You know, and I'd interview people. And so anyway, um, you know, I went to Garces, and for anyone that doesn't know, that's a private school, <laughs> yeah. and it's very, very college-driven, and I would have these meetings, and, you know, my college counselor would say, uh, so what's your plan? And I'd say, well, I'm, I'm going to go to Hollywood. Like, I'm going to work with celebrities and travel the world. <laughs> and uh, she said, okay, well, what's your backup plan? I said, no, 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 there is no backup plan. This is what I'm going to do. And so, you know, I think I just had something to prove. I think that I had a little bit of the, in that, in me, my entire life, being the youngest of two boys, um, growing up in a big family of cousins, and they were really competitive with grades and such. And that wasn't my thing. So I felt Mm -hmm. I had something to prove always. And I just, I wasn't going to stop until, you know, I made it happen. So that's yeah. being a small town girl to where I am now. I mean, <laughs> there was so many steps along the way. So many. <laughs> I mentally did it, if that makes sense. I don't know. Totally. No, I, I totally, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's very much more than that. But it, when, I love that you, when you see it, like you, you don't, For me, like when you, I don't know, when people have dreams, it's hard for people to see it or visualize it. For me, it's so easy. Like I see it, I can feel it and it's just in you and it's just going for it and doing it and trusting yourself, believing in yourself. And 
I love that. At such a young age that you did that. I think that's so admirable to go against the grain. And because look where you are now. I mean, you're a super successful businesswoman at only 40. And you are doing such amazing things in the world. And I love it. I just love it. And I love when people are doing amazing things like that. And that's such a cool story for me. I love that. I think that's really cool, especially being so young. You know, like I had the dream when I was that age too, but I, I don't know. I felt like I wasn't confident in myself. You know how it is. You know, you feel like you have to prove something and I was just not ready yet. My, I have to say my, my parents were so encouraging. Yeah. So encouraging. I, um, the summer I graduated high school. And so my, my freshman year of college, I went to Santa Barbara City College and I lived in the dorms and I had, you know, my parents wanted me to have like a college experience. But before I went there that summer, I got a job in Bakersfield at Simply Salon and I worked at the front desk answering phones. But that summer and those three months before I moved away, I learned so much just um about hair, about just about that world. And I just, I loved it. I knew that I was supposed to be part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I don't know. And then I went to Santa Barbara, you know, and then my sophomore year, I went to cosmetology school there. And then I just, I just came to LA, but my mom just encouraged it. My, my mom and dad. And once my dad understood that you could actually make a living, my dad was more concerned like, how are you going to support yourself? Yeah, sure. We didn't get it. This world wasn't spoken about. We didn't have social media, obviously. No. Yeah. Yeah. And um, once I worked in that salon and he met this hairdresser that he's, he's passed now, a dear friend of mine. And my dad really understood like, wow, this is, there's really some money to make here. And, and I think Marissa could do this. And from there, they supported me. I could have never, I mean, I worked extremely hard. I'm not going to take that away from myself. No. My parents they 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 supported me financially and emotionally to to make it happen and that you can't do it without that you know i couldn't have survived i couldn't have afforded to live in uh, to, to live in los angeles um and it was hard there were days that i just wanted to quit and completely give up and i'd call my mom and she'd say nope you're not coming home my dad would say come home i'll do anything you know I'll you just come home my mom would say nope you stick it out, do home, you'll be miserable, you know? So yeah, absolutely. You know, I would have, I would have really regretted giving up. So, um, you know, it was, I had a, you know, a definite team pu pushing me as well. Yeah. That you definitely need that, the support, you know, that support. And if you don't have that support, you have to somehow find it within yourself yeah. and, and, and do that. And so, yeah, it's very admirable that you did that at such a young age. I love that. Um, especially coming from where we come from, because it's where we come from. It's, it's very close to LA, but it's so opposite of LA. It's so, <laughs> it's so different. Yeah. It's hard to explain that because it's yeah. very tangible. It's like, oh, it's people, you know, I say, oh, I'm from Bakersfield. They go, oh, wow. Or I say, oh, I'm going to drive and see my parents for the day. And they go, oh God, how long is that drive? I'm like, it's an hour and a half. Yeah. It's the easiest drive. It's so quick yet. It's two totally different worlds. I mean, night and day. And, Absolutely, yeah. You know, night and day. It's nice because, like, when you live in Bakersfield, you have access to a more cosmopolitan world, right? That you can go dip your toe in. Yeah. Coming, if you go from this way to that way, from LA to Bakersfield, it's totally different. Yes. Know? Culture shock, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we're we're built tough here, for sure. <laughs> We're built tough here, so we could handle L.A. I feel like L.A. would be like, oh, what's going on <laughs> when you come here? Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a <clears throat> look, it's a bit more delicate, and um, for there, sure, there's just, this is such a melting pot of so many different, um, you know, um, cultures and people, and you, you really do learn a lot here in a different way. Um, I, you know, I, I, I have ups and downs with this town where I've, I've loved living here and I've not loved living here. Um, but I can always appreciate where I came from. And yeah. I know that that's what has always kept me grounded. And I've, I've absolutely never forgotten that I've done incredible things 
I, you know, and even when I'm, I'm riding those highs, I never, ever forget like who I am. You know, I'm still auto, like Garces high school, Bakersfield, California, <laughs> yeah. Hey broker. You know what I mean? Like that's who I am. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's so, so important. I love that. I've never gotten the vibe from you that you've lost that, you know, you've always been that at heart. And I love that. I, I totally admire that about you. And I don't know. And we've talked about riding the highs and riding those lows yeah. because I've, I kind of opened up to you a little bit about, you know, my highs and lows and things like that, you know, um, and it's hard. It is so hard, especially in this business. And you know, and what I think is funny too, is that you don't like being in the spotlight. You like being kind of behind the scenes. You don't want any wonder. Yeah. Like, I think that's so funny. I, I don't know. I think that's funny. It's what's really interesting about it is I, um, I have been like for years, I have been so good about not getting in like photos of paparazzi and stuff like that. Like I can dodge a camera. Like you wouldn't believe <laughs> you're like, I spotted a mile away by <laughs> out of the shot. You know, I know how to get out of the shot. And, um, you know, again, it wasn't about me. It was about my job. And only, only recently have I made it about me. And so it's so funny because yes, I'm putting myself out there and I'm saying like, Hey, this is who I am. And I'm getting dressed with you. And I'm, and more and more, even though I'm not speaking, my personality is coming out in these videos, right? So people are feeling like they know me. And then I'll be out in public and somebody says to me like, oh, I, a funny story. I was down the street at this local, I live in Burbank, and this local framing store where I get photos framed for my house. And the woman, she says to me, I've been going there forever. She goes, oh, I just wanted to tell you, um, I really enjoy your videos. And I was like, what? She goes, you, you came up on my, on my feed, you know, and I really like your videos. She goes, and I think I'm going to cut my hair off. You know, she was like this kind of middle-aged woman. And I hate to even say middle-aged. I can't believe I even said that. And what? Okay. God, I'm 40. She's a bit older than me. And she, she, I said, yeah, you should absolutely go for it. You know, what's holding you back? Blah, blah, blah. I gave her advice on this haircut. And then when I went to pick up my photos, she had chopped her hair off and she goes, oh, gosh. I, I love my neck showing, you know, she was so happy and it was so bizarre to me because I thought, why are you asking me? And like how you're acting like you're shocked that I'm in your store. Like I live down the street, you know, but suddenly you go, oh, somebody is viewing me completely different than, you know, the way that I view myself, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Cause, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier doing it online and you kind of send the video and you post it and you forget about it and you're like, okay, moving on with your day. And then you don't realize maybe what the impact was of the, and you're kind of like, oh shit. Which is the point, right? right. Totally. But it catches you off guard when you're not in that mode, I guess. Not even in that mode. Just, I guess it's, um, it's just new to me that it's, it's not about just my work. It's about me. You know, somebody could say, yeah. oh, so-and-so looked really good on the carpet because that was really all I was putting out, you know, but now I'm putting myself out. So it's, you know, it's just me in my, in my mind, sort of that switch. Yeah. I, which I love your videos. I love how you end all your videos with like, bye. I love that. It's so cute. I'm like, oh, I love that. She better do that every time when I saw you do it on the first one. I was like, she better make that a thing because that is so cute to close the video. And it didn't get it happen one day. It's like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, <laughs> bye. And then it, I was like, oh, I'll do that again. And then I went, oh, I'll just keep doing that. You know? Yeah. So. It's cute. I love it. I love your videos. They're really inspirational and they're, it's cool to see your style and stuff. So I love this style you have. So, do you have any tips, basic tips for, for women that are coming up into their 40s or maybe their moms that lost their style sense, kind of like how I, I feel, like we talked about, I feel like I lost a lot of my style and my myself, really, once I had kids and it kind of takes over your life and you lose that part of you. 
So for women that are in that position, maybe, or just anybody, what tips do you have? We don't want to dress too young, but we're not there yet. So how do you navigate that middle road there? I, okay, personally, I think you're only as old as you feel. Like, honestly, what is 40? 40 is nothing. What is 40? 30. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing at this time. You know, we when we were young, you think it's so old. But that's just because that, that the style was different. You know, the times were different. Women were literally just like raising kids and that their whole lives were about their kids, which women still do, but they take more time for themselves now. It's more acceptable, right? So it's more normalized for sure. So we can look better later, right? We can continue to look good into our sixties, seventies. Like my mom is there and she looks amazing, you know, so I can only hope, but yeah. my style and what I advise for people is like, I always just think it's like, go back to the basics. We're, we're so caught up these days in what TikTok is telling us to do, what this latest fashion is, what this latest mob wife aesthetic, clean girl aesthetic. People are like all over the place because they can't figure out who they are because they're being told it's this, it's that, it's this. Okay. What do you feel best in? Like for me, I'm a jeans and t-shirt girl. I just, I always feel best in jeans and t-shirts. So if I can't figure out what to wear, it's going to be like to the basics. I'm going to put on my favorite pair of jeans that fit me best and I know look good. Then I'm going to put on a nice white t-shirt that I know is going to look good. I'm going to go from there. What am I feeling? That's where you sort of accessorize and then create your own sense of self, which is like, do you add a belt? What kind of shoe do you add to that look? Are you a tennis shoe girl? Are you feeling like, you know what, I'm going to put on a high heel today and I'm going to dress up this jeans and t-shirt because that jeans and t-shirt can take you to so many different events and places just depending on how you style it. Mm. I think it's just like always going back to those basics. Like I have a collection of white t-shirts, black t-shirts, white tank tops, black tank tops, and vintage Levi's. Those oh, are I love it. And if you go look at my videos, everything kind of starts somewhere around there with that like basic sort of look. Anytime I'm packing a, to go somewhere, I always throw in a white tank top, a black tank top, a white t-shirt, a black t-shirt. Because if you get somewhere and you, you have to come up with another look suddenly, or you don't like what you packed, you're like, okay, I have these basics. Let me build around that. And it can completely switch something up. So that's, I don't know. That's kind of how I like to dress. I love that. And accessorize, you know, <laughs> hat, no hat. I'm a hat girl. So I'm always wearing a hat. Right. A hat can change it. It's, yeah. it's popping a jacket on top. It's taking a sweater and maybe tying it around your neck like a different way than you would normally tie it. Yeah. You know, it's these tiny little things that can take something that you just go, that's just like jeans and a white t-shirt and then just go, Oh wow, that girl looks really cool. You know? Yeah. And it's maybe, it's maybe just a pair of sunglasses, you know, it's just, it's these little things. Um, another thing that I always like to say, and I kind of will write captions sometimes like classic things, never get rid of classic things and they don't have to be expensive. They just have to be classic things. Like I have a pair of black leather pants that you can, I've worn them for years. You can see them in many videos. I got them in high school from The Gap. The Gap did a leather collection. They are real leather. They were like $150, I think. And they, that was expensive. You know what I mean? For my mom buying me in high school. But I never got rid of them. I kept them at my mom's house for all these years. And then probably like eight years ago, I was like, you know, I think a boot cut's going to come back in. I'm going to take these to L.A., I've been wearing them nonstop. Every time I wear them, somebody's like, where'd you get those leather pants? Those are really good. I'm like, I got these in 2000 at The Gap. Like, <laughs> at The Gap. <laughs> the Gap. Like, they're so yeah. Don't get rid of classic good pieces. Another thing I wear constantly is this, like, brown belt. And it's guest jeans. And it was a girl that I went to high school with, Katie Grimm. It was her belt in high school. I somehow ended up with it. And I wearing it for the last 22 years y'all thanks katie thanks for the belt like i still wear it to this day it's classic i you love know, that not it wasn't expensive actually i got it for free but originally it was it was 
but it's just a classic. So it's those kind of things that um, you got to just hold on to, you know, even if it's putting it in a storage away for a little bit, you might want to pull it back out. I wish I would have done that with all the damn Levi's, the 501s. I mean, it is like you cannot find a pair of Levi 501s to save, I can at least, to save my life. Well, I'll tell you where to go, but they're really expensive. <laughs> Redone does incredible Levi's 501s. So they okay. take a bunch of old Levi's and they rework them completely. Those are the ones I always wear. Uh, they have a store, like it's like literally a stand in Malibu out in Cross Creek. And then you can order online. But I advise like with these vintage Levi's, you must try them on in person because the sizes are never great. Yeah. There's also a place in Santa Barbara called Love Worn. And it's right in the funk zone downtown Santa Barbara next to the beer garden. And it's like a garage that opens. It's a vintage store. Stop. And of vintage Levi's. You must try them on in person. That is, that's great. So I was in Denver recently for Thanksgiving and we went shopping. I think it was anthropology. I keep trying to think. And I found a, just one rack and it was like in the back and against the wall and it was all 501s. And I'm like, what the hell? Why is no one over here like snagging these jeans? I'm like, what? They were, they were like 200 something dollars. Yeah. And, but yeah. look, again, look at my videos and you see how much I wear them. Some of them, yeah. now granted, some of them I have gotten like one pair I wear in my videos all the time. And I think I paid $1.99 for them when I was in college. So some of them I've gotten from like Goodwill when I was young. And then some of the ones I get now, most of the ones I get now are a bit more pricey. Yeah, it's crazy. Random in a random town and I go into a vintage store and find them. But because then they're never expensive. And you're like, wait, how much did you say? I'll take them. Say, I'll take two. You got two in this size? They don't fit right. I'll take them. <laughs> I don't care if they're too small. I'm taking them. I'll go on a diet, though. Um, yes, that, I miss that. I, I love the 90s style. I'm so glad it's coming back. All the boot cut. The, yeah. I mean, all of it. The flares, the low rise. If only we could get Delia's to send us a catalog, right? Girl, Delia's is still going. I is think, it? I think so because okay, I need to order some um, vinyl pants that I had in eighth grade if they are right. I, so I, I like, um, who else, who else? I can't think of the dang store that's still around, but yeah, going back to saving things, I, I wish I would have just saved a couple things from like Contempo or like <laughs> wet seal. <laughs> I loved those stores. I couldn't wait till I could fit into them. I was so small. Well, you too, but like, you know, everybody in, in junior high started wearing wet seal and contempo. And I was just, I did too. I was just dying to get into that double zero to wear like those lavender purple cords with your belt. I died. The cords. Oh, oh, man. Lime green, purple. I mean, I had like, I had this purple outfit in eighth grade. It was like the matching top, you know, that V, it probably like V'd up from the, to open the belly button, you know? Oh yeah. Clear plastic belts. Do you remember? Those? Yes, I do remember those. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Loved it. I miss that. I, I don't care. I'm buying all the 90s stuff. I'm wearing it. The, like the glasses, the early 2000s. I'm bringing it back. I don't even care. It's back, but think that at any time anybody should wear what they feel best in yeah that's, that's what it boils down to it's like yeah. it you know you think of the classics and um this is a male reference but you think of james dean and for me i'm always doing male photo shoots right so a lot of times some a lot of times it just gets too complicated and and it's it's, it's too much and then you just like i just want to look at a man right i just want a man to look like a man and you think what do I want him to look like? And you just go, good jeans, a white t-shirt, and a vintage leather jacket. Yeah. It's a classic. We're always going to go back to those classics. Those looks are always going to be something. So if you have a look and it's your look, you know, wear it. Although, although, I don't feel that way about hair and makeup. I think that we evolve in those areas. <laughs> We'll just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
What? Okay, so going into makeup and stuff and skincare, are you really into skincare? Your eyebrows are always just flawless, like so good. And I feel like now that, you know, we've reconnected or whatever, and I see your videos, and I feel like I remember you and I always having these big ass eyebrows. Big. I was going to say, it's it's funny when eyebrows came back in style because yeah. as a kid, I mean, I'm Greek and Portuguese, so I had one eyebrow and a mustache. Let's not kid, you know? So yeah. it's, I, I was tweezing those eyebrows so thin, you know? And then I remember, I don't know, somewhere around like 2013, 2014, I was like, I just can't be tweezed. They had gotten so thin. I said, you know, I'm going to grow these back in. And I remember when I was growing them back in, my mom was like, whoa, those brows, you know, it's like you forget how much you have. And, you know, it took a bit of time until I could get them back. But now I don't even do it. Now I just do tweeze the middle and, and leave them, which is nice. But um, I, you know, as far as skincare goes, I have found that using natural organic products for me, like clean products, has completely changed my skin. And my skin is also very sensitive, so I get a lot of stuff, but I'm not able to try a lot of stuff because I will have been. Yeah. So I, I also find that genetics plays a huge, huge part in it, and I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate in that area. But I'm not gonna lie, I definitely get you know a little Botox, and um, I'm not afraid to get a little bit of a, like a nip here and there, if you need it, you know, do what yeah, you yeah. need to do to feel good. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to that as much as I try to be like clean and natural, um, with what I'm putting on my skin, I, I'm also going to go get Botox. So it's all about balance, you know, same, yeah, with, <laughs> same with fitness for me. You know, I, I like to work out as many days a week as I can. I like to eat clean and healthy foods. But I also really enjoy like a Crunchwrap Supreme from Taco Bell and a hamburger and fries from McDonald's. Girl, you, know? you are talking all my language here. Crunchwrap Supreme, that is my order. No lettuce, no tomatoes. Oh, <laughs> I want it. I need all of it. And it's the best like to go in the car food. You know, it's all for you. Yes. Uh, but, you know, so it's, yeah, it's balance. And, and I feel that way about about beauty as well. It's balance. We can't be perfect all the time. We, we do our best, but, you know. Yeah, it's all about balance. You can't always be on. You know, you have to have those times where you give your body a break, give your skin a break. Yeah. You know. I mean, if I'm not, if I'm not going to work, I don't put makeup on. And to be totally straight, like, I, I'm still in my workout clothes. Like, I went and worked out. I rushed home. I blew out the sweat into my hair and um, I like, put on a touch of makeup to look decent. but I'm literally in you know a sports bra under this and my workout pants so yeah if I wasn't you know this was otherwise I'm very you know I'm I'm real and laid back and I don't have if I don't have to go anywhere or do anything I'm really not like doing all the things it's really for me gonna be some face oil and some eyebrow gel and some lip balm that's gonna like do it for me you know yeah same I'm like sweats sweatshirt baggy I don't care what I look like if I don't have anything going on and I yeah. hate makeup on and I wear sometimes I'll wear lashes when I do auditions yeah. depending on what the role is for and man, when I put the damn eye, I, I'm like, I can't wait to rip them off. I'm so just over it. I don't know. It must just be, no, I don't know. I'm not a lash girl. It's so funny. I'm such a minimalist makeup person. And that's even why when I do these makeup videos, I'm like, everybody's just going to get bored of this because I'm like, I, I kind of like stick to one look, you know? Yeah. But there's a market for that. I mean, there's there's women that don't always want to be on where they have the full face of makeup. You know, there's there's there are, a, you know, thank God, some people that do want to have that natural organic no. look, you know, um, and it's really hard be getting to our age to keep away from the Botox and things like that, because we're used to seeing ourselves so like plump and like you know I, I've lost a lot of collagen here and 
I'm just not ready like to go get filler or anything, but like, I want my skin to still be radiant, you know? Yeah. So what I will say about that, um, I know a lot of times, you know, people will say like, I'm, I'm just not ready to do it. And the, the, the truth behind it all, and this sounds a little bit bad, is the more the lines set in, the more the lines set in. Yeah. Right. So right. if you're freezing them a little bit, they're not, you're not going to use them. However, the, the, the higher your metabolism is, the faster you're going to burn it. So it's like, I mean, I, I, I burn through that stuff so, so quickly, but I, I think the thing with aging and keeping a youthful face, my number one thing for me is I never wear powder. Not one powder product goes on my face. Um, even if I were to like, I'll put a little bit of powder shadow on, but then on top, I'm going to put something radiant on top of it. I, I think that the thing that we need to remember is anything matte or dry is just aging it's just dragging your face down mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid of oils and things like that all i put on my face is a bunch of oils a ton of oils i think the shinier i look the better because you know you have to okay sorry i'm tripping myself up people, no, right. people that have oily skin are always like worried about having oily skin growing up like oh my skin's so oily blah 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 as you get older, your skin's going to be better because you have all that oil in it to keep it nice and hydrated. Anybody with drier skin, it's going to be harder. Your skin's going to be dehydrated. It's going to suck up. So for me, you know, it's just all about keeping it nice and fresh and plump and using oils and using creams. So for me, that's, that I think is the best look. I think there's nothing more aging or drab than a matte face with harsh lines and that I mean on the eyes, harsh lines, I mean on the face, harsh lines, contour lines, all those sort of things. I find that everything a bit more blurred out is a bit more youthful. Yeah, for sure. I've been using retinol a lot and that makes your face very shiny. And when it, well, for me it does, I don't know what's in it, but these other, whatever it is. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, wow, that looks so much better when I put all that on and it's like just glowing and yes. I wear, and like, if I go, I, I, when I teach spin, that's what I do. Like I'll shower, I'll put all that on and then I'll put my hair up and I'll go to spin. Yeah. And it's like, I just, I don't care anymore. I don't put like anywhere. It couldn't just be spin. It could be anywhere. And I just put that on and I'm good. It's really when I only do these that I have makeup and yeah. eyelashes and, you know, look, if, if you, if, if women take care of their end men, if you take care of your skin, proper skincare, and you know you're you're using your sunscreen, you're protecting your face from the sun. Yeah. Um, um, some face oil, moisturizer, eye cream, lip balm, curling the lashes, and some brow gel really, really does a lot, a lot more than you think. You know, so yeah. just and and for women that are maybe like afraid of, um you know, they're, they're used to this. I have to put all these things on every single day. Cause that's just what I do. It's maybe just like taking one thing away at a time and seeing like, for oh. me, you know, maybe it's, if you're used to putting it on, you, you take it off one thing at a time. For me, the way that I work, like I did a funny little video on this called girl math, but the way I work is like, I look in the mirror in the morning and I'm like, what do I need? Right? Like how bad do I look? And I'll be honest this morning, it was not great. Like I'm getting a big pimple on my chin. I had all these red bumps on my face. It wasn't great. So it's like, what do I need? Right? So I start with the face oil. Then I do my brows and I work from there. It was like, oh, you know what? I could really use a little bit of concealer today. I'm going to pop that on. I could use a little bronzer today. I'm going to add that. And then it's like, oh, I want a little glow on my cheek and some lip balm. You know, it's yeah. starting from a place of what do I need and working from there. Not what do I do? What do I know? It's like every day you don't need the same thing. Your skin doesn't need the same thing every day. Just like you don't typically do your hair the same way the other days or every day. Some people do, but you know what I mean? It's some days you look at yeah. the mirror, oh, I just need to put this hair up, you know, or whoa, my hair has so much volume. It looks gorgeous. I'm going to wear it down. You know, same with your skin. View it in that way. Like, what does it need today? What? Do Ooh, that's a good one. That's so interesting. I love that. That's so true. Because some days you wake up and you're like, I look good. 
I look good. I don't need a lot. I'm just going to put some moisturizer on, pinch the cheeks a little. I'm good. And sometimes on those days when you look good and then you put on your makeup, you could look in the mirror and think, I actually look worse now because you already looked good and you didn't need all those things. You know, I definitely had that thought before. I'm like, oh my God, I look awful. I need to wash all this shit off and start over and just be at ground zero for sure. So just really start in a place of like, what do I need and build from there? And you'll notice you don't need a lot. And it's funny because on like a, into like a fashion note on that, um, when I travel, like personal travel, not for work, I, and I try for work, but it doesn't always happen, but I will only carry on. Like I refuse to check a bag because your bags get lost, stuff gets stolen. It's, I've just had terrible situations. Yeah. I, we, last summer, my family went to Portugal, which actually I wore that top when we were in Portugal. That you oh, have. yeah, I, I saw that post. Yes, yes. So I told everyone, I said, listen, we have too many flights, too many trains, too many cars. Everybody has to carry on. You get one suitcase and one duffel, right? Like that's yeah. for 10 days. So everyone's like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to do this? I said, Trust me, you need less than you think. Start from what do I need and build from there. And like my mom couldn't believe it. She we, we went home and she was like, I had three, like three outfits I didn't even wear. It's like, you really don't need that much. We're so used to having a lot. But yeah. Strip it down to what do I need. It's really not that much. And yeah. I, I love things. I love things. All the things. <laughs> but when you really strip it down, we don't, we don't need that much. I like that. I like that. And also in life too, just in life, you know, just your house, having so many things and it's a lot, it's so much stress. And the older I'm getting, and I feel like I turned this leaf a lot sooner than I, than I wanted to, or thought I would, I was so into the home decor and having like all the things and updating it all the time. And, and now it's like, yeah, I like having the things, but less is more. And I have kids and they have toys and they have clothes and like just everything. And so it's just too much, so much. Like my house is minimal. Like we have all tile floors, no rugs, like anywhere, which sucks because when I do my auditions, I have to like soundproof the whole room. Oh, right. Right. Yes. And I'm like, I need to get those things we're going to get the things to put all around on the wall so it's just yeah yeah, but less is so much more like in life home and like I was going to ask you too about wardrobe how do you feel about like a capsule wardrobe because that's kind of what you were on the lines of you know starting with this and how do you start doing a capsule wardrobe if you will you know Funny, I never even had heard that term until like recently with with social media making capsule wardrobe a thing. So I never yeah. thought about building a capsule wardrobe. I guess I had just been kind of doing it along the way with things. Yeah, like- you're just a cutting edge girl all through so, and through. I, I guess I just always sort of saved really good things that I liked. Now yeah. I also am a. Um, I'm a Zara purchaser. I'm an Amazon purchaser. I, you know, I go through stages of excess and then where I'm like, I need to reel it in. This is stupid. I'm buying too much. But um, again, as far as a capsule wardrobe, it's yeah, it's keeping those nice basics so that when you're buy, you're buying all the excess stuff, you don't feel bad about getting rid of that. You know, you keep those yeah. basics. And for me, yeah, it's a great pair of jeans. Um, for me, Levi's, but that could be whatever jean denim fits you best. Um, a great white t-shirt. Some of my favorites are, um, I love ATM, a brand, ATM clothing. They make a great white t-shirt that I love. I have multiples of them. Um, I also like Redone. They re- they do a Hanes t-shirt from like a vintage Hanes t-shirt that I have in a bunch of, I have a bunch of white ones that I love. Um, and then, yeah, like having a great black blazer, I think is necessary for me. I have like a, that I, that I've had for years and just constantly worn one of the, like, one of them is expensive and one of them is Zara, but I just, they're, I love them. They're classics. I'll always wear them. Yeah. Uh, a great pair of black pumps. I think a great pair of black boots. It's a great belt. 
I think a nice watch and a nice pair of like earrings that you could wear every day that you don't have to take off, you know, and, and those are investment pieces, the watch and the earrings. But I think for me, you know, those kind of things can just dress up your sort of basic thing. But I don't know. I guess those are sort of, you know, oh, I, I mean, always, I always have to have a good pair of white sneakers. I love white mm-hmm. sneakers. So, yeah, I have black sneakers that like some Nike sneakers that I stole from my daughter, actually. And I'm like, these are totally mine now. Like I'm wearing these. I wear them all the time. They go with everything. And I feel good in them and I don't care what I look like. And I'm like, this is what I'm wearing and I'm comfortable. And yeah. they just go with everything. I can wear them with Lululemons. I can wear them with jeans, you know, shorts even. So they're like my go-to. But I love that. And the capsule thing is so, I don't know, intriguing to me because again, like just less is more. And like, it's stressful having just going in the closet and seeing like all these things. It's like, oh my God what do I wear today? Like I haven't worn any of this stuff in two years. I should just give it away. Well, I'll be honest, living in Los Angeles, you know, we don't, well, I don't, um, the storage space that I, that I would have, you know, if I living in Bakersfield, like, you know, thing, my mom's closet, every time I'm home, I just lay on the ground of her closet and think, Oh, what would I do with all this space? Uh, I've got butters. I've got shoes in the second bedroom closet. You know, I've got jeans in my bedroom. Like, I've got stuff throughout my entire house. You know, I just don't have the space for a lot. And I have a lot. I'm not trying to downplay. I uh, <laughs> I like things, as somebody in my house likes to tell me. <laughs> uh, I have to like, keep a minimum because I just don't have the space. I'm also very anal and I can't have things out. Like everything has to have a space and be put away. So my, I don't want to call myself OCD because I've never been diagnosed with that. And I think people love that, but I am quite anal (laughs) and I am, I like things a certain way. Yeah. And I'm quite particular. How about that? I'll use that word. It's a little particular. That's a good one. Good choice. I'm quite particular, so I can't have excess because it'll drive me insane. So it's just all my um, parameters have made me this way, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, totally. I feel the same way. Um, Do you think that brands matter? I mean, high-end brands, do you think they really matter? Or maybe just your, now that I've talked to you, maybe just your important pieces are good to splurge on as opposed to, you know what I mean? Like, as opposed to like having designer everything, you know, like the purse and the this and the that. I, like, just keep it. Uh, yeah. I don't think that it's um, important to buy designer everything because I think that you can buy good things anywhere. Um, I do. I look. There are certain designers that like, I get the email and I just like swoon over everything. I, you know, I always think, oh, if I won the lottery, like take me here because I'm just buying a whole new wardrobe, but that's not realistic. I also know it's so stupid. Like I don't need to pay a thousand dollars for a white tank top. I love it. Do I need to pay that? No. Certain things. Yes. A good pair of shoes. Absolutely. I have a pair of Celine pumps that. I bought in 2011, a friend bought me a gift. I returned the gift and I used the money towards from the gift towards these shoes because I couldn't even afford them on my own at the time, right? And I paid the difference. This is when Barney's was still around. Now those pumps, I wear to this day, they're in some of my videos from last month. That's a shoe that has lasted me 12 years. So Yes, it's comfortable. It was really expensive, but it's comfortable and it's lasted. I've had the bottom resold, but it's a classic. So do I think that kind of thing is worth it? Absolutely. You know, I like an expensive pair of sunglasses, but I also like a $10 pair of sunglasses. So Mm. I find certain things, yes, and certain things, no. You know, um, I do prefer my jeans that are more expensive, I'll be honest. I I like a pair of jeans from Zara, but I'm going to always go with my other jeans because they're just always going to be a better fit on me. Um, 
certain things yes and certain things no and again i don't really don't get rid of those things if i spend money on designer things i typically don't get rid of them unless it's like a big fad and then i'll go sell it maybe but um yeah i try to really just i'm trying to be smarter about those pieces i'll be honest yeah and i think that's yeah and i think um i was trying to word the question and it like story of my life it doesn't come out how i want it to come out but yeah like when brands i love i love the just keeping it to like what matters you know like a good purse or like a good handbag a good shoe a good sunglasses maybe a pair of nice earrings yeah and to a minimum you know i think it's overkill when you have like the celine shoes and the prada bag and the chanel sunglasses and the whatever pants and like a Louis Vuitton shirt. And it's like, okay, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's but, a lot. Yeah. On, on an any day, you're going to find me in like my favorite workout set, which is typically actually a Lululemon knockoff that I get on Amazon. It's on my storefront if you want it. It's yeah, everybody needs to go to your storefront. I'm definitely, I will, when I post this, I'll put okay. it all in there and I'll have it all. Yeah, it's like you'll find me in this thirty-two dollar workout set, but then I'll have on I don't know a yeah a you know maybe a Saint Laurent bag and a pair of Celine sunglasses. But yeah. you know it's 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 highs and lows. It's it's mixing those. And I would say I'm I'm more lean into designer accessories than clothing. Um, but sometimes I can dip my toe in. It just depends. Just a little bit. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Um, yeah, it's it's always just what do I splurge on? You know, what are good things to splurge on? Um, and that's kind of yeah, yeah. Those are the things like shoes and bags and sunglasses for sure. I feel like and I'll be totally honest. For me, it depends on the kind of month, year, day I'm having because my job is is there is no guaranteed salary. You know, I yeah. work when I get work. So if I'm if I feel that I'm having an incredible month and I'm working nonstop and I'm making what I consider to be more money than normal, I'll splurge a little on something. I'll get myself something. But if I'm having a time that's a little bit slow, I'll be like, you know what, Marissa, you need to reel it in because you don't have the checks coming in like you did. Yeah. And, you know, I, I need to put money away for my retirement. Like nobody's, I don't have a, you know, there's not a company that created a 401k <laughs> for me. The know, every month. Like I have to do these things myself and that's part of growing up. And that's a big reality of being in this business is understanding that I pay an agent a fee. And then also at the end of the year, I have to have 20% of my money set aside to pay the IRS. You yeah. Know? The taxes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, and then I have to have money to put away into my IRA because that's also a write-off for my for my taxes and also for my future. You know, I you can't how long I don't know how long can I do this job? We'll see. But you know, it's it's um it depends on the kind of month, day, year I'm having to be totally honest with you on what I'm buying. Yeah. Because I, you know, I think that's pretty relatable. I think a lot of people can relate to that, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um so Really quick, because I know you have to run. Um, I don't know. Do you want to play a game or do you want to talk about anything? Like, we can play a game, whatever you like. Okay, okay let's do it. Um, so it, this game is called This or That. I'm going to give you a couple things and you can elaborate on them if you want to. Um, and we can take them for face value or they could mean something bigger. Who knows? Like, You'll see. Okay. So first, this or that, dine-in or delivery? Um, I would say, you mean like dine-in dine to a restaurant? Dine-out. Sorry. Dine-out or delivery. My bad. I, I would say dine-out. I don't like delivery because it never arrives the way that you expect it to. It's like soggy. Uh, they take too long. And it depends on what you order. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather go to a restaurant. Um but, you know, mostly I'm cooking, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same. I have three kids. Like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm cooking. But on Fridays and Saturdays, I go out to dinner, and I love it. I like to I love honest. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that when you, you know, you can go out to dinner, and you can, like, 
wear your cute stuff and dress up. And that's, you know, our time as women to make it, you know, about us or, you know, make just dress really cute and wear your cute shoes that night, you know. <laughs> What'd you say? And it's like the Friday night football game. Yes. Oh my God. Did we play each other in football? Because you guys were private. I think we did play you. We did. It was a lot smaller back then. There was not 45 high schools. No, there's no high schools now. No, we, I think we did play you. I know Garces plays Centennial now because my niece plays volleyball at Garces and they play. Oh, nice. Yeah. But I think so. I think I, so. Yeah. Yeah. We have some, we, our, our um, high schools, like, I feel like our classes, we were the class of one, we were all so close. Like, how does that happen? It's not like that nowadays. I think that a lot of, um, in our year, a lot of public school junior high kids went to Garces. Yeah. Where did you go to junior high? Norris, right? Yeah. And like, br- like three or four people from Norris went to Garces. So we had that intertwined friend group of people from yes. And then we went to Garces, so we all stayed friends because we lived in the same neighborhood, you know? Yeah. Like, Brian Foster, Brandy Harrison, like, we all lived, like, you know, we were all neighbors. Like, we hung. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, Brandy, yes, I love Brandy. I still, I keep in touch with her a little bit on Instagram. You guys are close, though, right? No, we, I mean, we stay in touch on socials, but, like, I haven't seen her in a long time. But, yeah, I, I like, I've never met her children, but, like, We've stayed close on, on socials over the years. So yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. such a cool mom. She yeah. has three boys and she's like, yeah. I am like, Brandy, you are killing it. I know. I'm always talking about it. I'm like, hey, remember I told you about my friend that has the three surfer boys? Like I'm always like showing her videos. No, I love it. Yeah. She's such a badass and she's still swimming and she's so amazing. She's incredible. I love watching her stuff and chatting with her. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, she's a, she's a good one. She's a gem. Yes. I love Brandy. She was also one in high school that was very minimalist on the makeup. She would only curl her eyelashes. Oh, for so long. Remember that mascara? Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. She was so, I'm like, God, girl, you got it going on. And we're only like 15. Girl, homegirls walking into class all flawless. Like that. But I know. So beautiful. She had that tan skin from swimming all the time. I know. Right? So amazing. Okay, next one. Plan ahead or live in the moment? Oh, plan ahead. <laughs> You're OCD. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a live in the moment kind of gal. Look, with my job, I got to roll with shit. But at the same time, like, I need to know all the details that are possible because I need to know. I need to yeah. know what I'm wearing, what I'm packing, what I'm doing. I need to be prepared in life. And that is about planning ahead. I lay my outfits out every night still, even my workout. Are you really? Yeah. And I, I love that. I warm out every night and um, I still do it, even if it's a workout set, down to the socks, the shoes, everything. Oh my God, I love that. Wow. E the night before for the morning. I set up my athletic greens the night before for the morning. There's no thinking involved. It's just go, go, go. Oh my God. My husband would love you. Like you guys are just on the same level. Like I am so not like that. I am like, go with the flow. Well, like I'm adventurous. Like let's fly to Hawaii today. Okay. Like let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, that's fun. Somebody, that's how my friends are. That's how all my friends are. It's like all my friends are fly by the seat of their pants, like yeah. whatever. Um, so that's why I think I'm attracted to people like that. Um, yeah. I'm a Gemini, so I'm very, like, go all the places, yeah. do all the things. Yeah. Last minute, 4 a.m., okay, let's go. Like, who's driving? I'm down. No, something is, like, if I see some schedule that's later than my bedtime, my brain's already, like, um, like, no, I have to go to bed. Like, I have to be up next morning. I have a workout at 7, da-da-da, 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 yeah. No. Yeah, oh, my God, that's crazy. I'm like, it'll all work out. It's fine. Let's just give it, we'll give it to God. <laughs> okay, last one. I like this. Oh, there's two. Okay, education or life experience? Life experience. Same. I, um... I, I will say on that topic, I, uh, I love to read, uh, 
okay. In school, I didn't really care about school. I just really didn't. I was so excited to get to my life. I could not wait to get to my life. Like I just, I was excited for my life. I just didn't care about school at all. Um, however, my grandmother was a English um, teacher and a librarian. And she's also a genius, like an act- actual genius. She's brilliant. And she loved to teach me things. She loved for me to read. I love to read. And now in life, I love to learn about things. Mm-hmm. I have had so much life experience that I know I have street smarts. I, I know a lot about a lot because of my travels and that's life experience. And because I've learned those little things, I will then educate myself on them further when I find them in, interest in them. So I think that growing up, I maybe, I didn't think I was ever stupid by any means, but I remember not, I think because my grades didn't reflect somebody who was really smart, right? Yeah. But now, and I don't even care how this sounds, um, I know I'm smart. I know I'm a smart person. I know that I think logically. I know that if I don't know something, I will learn about it. And I think that's part of being smart. And I think that... I just, I didn't go to college. You know, I went to one year of city college. I never got my grades. I went to beauty school. Like it's not, it's not about education. Sometimes it's about life experience and educating yourself on what you're learning. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Learning is what it's all about. And the journey, I don't know if it's because we're getting older that I, that we're realizing, you know, that maybe this, that the school doesn't matter and the college and I'm telling my daughter, like, yeah, go to college, but, you know, it's okay, too. If there's something else that's pulling you away, like, that you're gravitating towards, like, I want you to follow that. You know, listen to your heart. And it's not all about, you know, oh, you have to be a doctor. You have to be a lawyer. You have to be this, that. Yeah. Follow your dream. Follow your path. Yeah. And there's so many more, um, because of social media, we're so much more open to seeing other jobs and what's out there and what people are doing. Whereas before we didn't even know they existed. Right. So it goes to so much more in that way. And so, yeah, you're able to learn about more things and maybe what you're interested in seek that out. But look, I think that you can not go to school, stay in the same place, stay around the same people and be really stupid. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about, it's about educating yourself in life, right? And right. you can go to school, but that doesn't mean a teacher or a professor is going to do any of those things. You have to do it for yourself. If you want to be smarter, if you want to know more about something, you've got to put that time in. Just like if you want to be better at something, you've got to practice it. It's just common sense in life. Like your brain is the same as your body. You got to exercise. I think we're just told, you know, this is the path that we have to take. And there's only this way and there is no plan B. And then when someone does want to go off this way, you know, it's weird. It's like, well, what's your plan B? Well, I don't have a plan B this way. Like you won't let me have a plan B if I go to college. Why can't I go to LA and pursue my dream? So what? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's just the, the mentality that we are all told, like, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. There's so many other things, especially today, like on social media, on everything is so just technology driven that you can do anything, you can literally do anything. anything. And I, I think that everybody should believe that too, that they could do anything because like, why can't you? The only person stopping you from doing anything is you. That's mm-hmm. it. That's it. Yep. Like, go do it, you know? For you, do it to prove to somebody else, do it for whatever reason, but you're the only one that can do anything. You're the only one that can make your own life decisions. And that's just life. Yeah. And you just have to trust yourself and go for it. Yeah. And And not care what people say. Be mistakes, but like you'll learn something, right? You'll learn something. And trust me, um, this was my path, but there have been things that I look back on and I say, I should have done this. I should have done that. I shouldn't have been doing this. And that's okay. I'm still here. Like I'm, I'm still where I'm still in a good place. Right. It, right. It was, uh, yeah. I could have been somewhere else, but Hey, here I am. Yeah. And you, I love it. You followed your dream. You knew what you wanted and you went for it. You didn't t- have anyone telling you you weren't going to have that. Like, don't tell me, no, I'm going to do this. And you did it. And that's impressive. And I, I'm so glad that you came and you shared all of your knowledge. I think that you just 
are such a great, you're a gem, just like Brandy. <laughs> you're a total gem and you do great things in this world. And I'm just really proud to know you and, and be able to share you on here because you do really, you are an amazing person. And, and I just want everyone to see that and all the things, all the things. I'm, I, um, I'm so happy to do this. I honestly, um, people, if, if anybody says to me like, Oh, would you mind doing this? It's like, yeah. Anybody that wants to spend time with me to like, I, you know what I mean? it's like, why wouldn't I want to do this? I'm happy to do this. I'm so glad we reconnected. And um, yeah, that is really the nice thing about social media. And I really do love uh, all the support and the nice things that you're always, uh, you know, outpouring on social media. And I'm loving getting to see, you know, what you're up to. And I can't wait to see you pursue your dancing dream more and your acting dream more. You know, it's, it's very exciting. And it's, it's all part of that. Like, you can do anything. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, um, I thank you for coming, and I know that you have to run. So um, thank you so much, and maybe we'll do this again. Who knows? I think this yeah. is, is going to be a great – I think people will love this for sure. Yeah. No, if people like it, we'll do it again because obviously we still have so much more to say. So much more. I want to dive back into, you know, just the old days too, like all the stories. Trouble. <laughs> uh,